Well, well, okay, good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, SoccerMentors.com and uh, the webinar series. Tonight's guest is Adrian Parrish from Kentucky. Uh, actually, I don't know he's originally from Kentucky, but I'll let him share more on that, where he's from. Uh, I think you'll pick up where he's from, uh, for those that do not know him. But he is uh, the, the director of coaching for Kentucky Youth Soccer. He is uh, also the Region 2 U.S. Youth, Region, US Youth Soccer Region 2 coaching chairperson. He's an ODP staff member. He's also a U.S. soccer uh, staff coach as well. Uh, Adrian, thank you for taking time away from your, uh, your, your little boy tonight and uh, your, your, your dog. And <laughs> this one, right? Just the to one now, yeah. For being with us. So thank you. And I'm going to let you have the screen. And tonight's topic for everyone is, is defending late versus defending early. Um, and I know Adrian will, will share a lot of it. So okay. go ahead and get started, Adrian. Thanks, Vince. Uh, first off, just want to thank Vince as well for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to come present to you guys today. I've, I've done lots of work with Vince before, and um, I know many of you people that are on here uh, on this webinar um, have the same opinion of Vince as I do. He's very well respected, and uh, I certainly enjoy working with him. And, enjoy the opportunity to actually even work with him this weekend so I want to thank Vince for this opportunity um, so um, as you can tell like Vince said it is uh, it is uh, it is a Kentucky accent it's just very eastern Kentucky you just got to go very far east uh, <laughs> over the pond and uh, <laughs> quite a few miles over the pond so but I, I came to the United States about uh, 13 years ago via a few different places and uh, I've ended up here in, in Region 2 and uh, been the Kentucky State Director of Coaching since 2005 so um, as, a, as a coach myself like I just mentioned it's always an honor and a, a, a pleasure uh, just to get these opportunities but uh, continuously learn myself so uh, from other people so hopefully you guys will be able to pick something up from it um, at the end, there is all my contact details, uh, which, uh, you, you know, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact them, uh, contact me uh, at the end or anytime through, uh, through email or, or uh, social networking services, I guess, these days with Twitter is quite popular as well. So, yeah. anyway, we will uh, we'll get started here with the, uh, with the screen sharing. Um, so, hopefully this will work. I'll, I'll help you here. All right. Thanks, buddy. Uh, you Hopefully you can you can see that there now. Are we on with the PowerPoint presentation? No, I see you. Try try and hit it and then hit start okay. screen share. Okay, let's go. Good job I wasn't picking my nose yet. So that's good. Yeah. Start screen share. Okay, now I see your desktop, and then call up your PowerPoint. There we go. Okay. There we go. Thanks. Perfect. Oh, I had it. Um, Hopefully, then, if you saw my desktop, you saw saw my little one there, who is the uh, the better one of the players out of the, the two of us. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's actually a very interesting topic that Vince asked me to discuss about here today: defending late versus defending early. Um, <laughs> right now, uh, I found it even more interesting, especially after today's game, which there seems to be the big discussion going on right now: Germany and Spain. Um, and two different totally total styles of even how these both Bayern Munich and Barcelona seem to defend and uh, you know Barcelona is very well known for their attacking style and how they play so it's uh, been very interesting uh, to when you consider them a defensive team and how they how well they do defend compared to how Bayern Munich's defending uh, was probably more of defending earlier compared to Barcelona's of defending from the front so, so is that, if we go into that, uh, you got to think about you know there is more than one way to skin a cow. There's many way, many different ways to defend. Uh, when I started in coaching education, and I started on on the teaching side of the game, we was always very stuck in, in my, the okay. Well, do we show inside? Do we show outside as an individual? You know, do we show into the middle or do we show down the line? I did have the opportunity for ever since I was seven or eight years old when I started playing. I actually did play as a right back and managed to stay there for my whole entire career, uh, having a small spell playing semi professional in England and in the US uh, before actually, and still staying as a right back before going into coaching. Um, so, you know, 
me personally as an individual defender I would always like to show players down the line because when I was young which is quite a long time ago I, w I was fairly quick uh, however when I thought about showing down the line the chances are that you would only always ch either get a throw in given to the other team or if you win the tackle you know it, it's you know it's probably a sliding tackle or something like that so there's many different ways that we've got to defend so when you're working with your youth players you've got to be very careful uh, on how we say to youth players say this is how we're going to do it and this is the only way we're going to do it because the game is uh, not just black and white, there's grey areas and as you see as we'll go through this it depends on the thirds of the field, it depends on other aspects as well how you defend individually, how you defend as a small group, how you defend as a team so right now as we're just talking about this obviously is which one is defending versus late, defending versus earlier so you know one might be better for you as a coach one might be better for you, uh, the team that you're playing against uh, on Saturday or Sunday as a coach, but throughout the game and throughout your season, you're going to come across many different ways and you have to be able to teach your players to, to uh, see that. So, um, strangely enough, we just talked about uh, Barcelona there earlier, and not just against, uh, well, in fact, both of those gentlemen probably had a very bad week anyway. So... Uh, but it's uh, interesting that uh, even the difference between Real, Madri Real Madrid's way that they defend compared to the way that Barcelona defend as well is a difference in coaching philosophy as well. Very much could be. You as a coach could defend uh, very much where you like to defend from the front and try and win the ball back early. Do you have the players that are capable of doing that? Or do you have big target players that might not necessarily want to do the word defending from the front so you defend for further back and then try and hit your team on the counter attack uh, your opposition on the counter attack throughout the season you're going to come across as I already mentioned many different opponents that are going to play different ways and this is why it's very important in my opinion that you, you are able to teach your players both different styles of how you defend early and how you defend late um, if, you, if you saw the opportunity there earlier, I, I do coach my son's U9 team and even going down to that there, and I was having a discussion about that earlier, we've got to, we try to even create a little style of how we're playing now, more on the style of the attacking ways because we don't, we've not touched on anything defensively yet, but eventually we would like to try and as they progress and go into being 11, 12, 13, we would like to try and teach our players to defend from the front having that discussion with somebody else who turned around and says well if we've got big strong target players and we're able to get them and they can do a job for us we may have to change our style All right, so yes you do so you might be playing against teams that don't like that and you can unrest them as well so lots of different things in my opinion there and again this is just my opinion that it, for me it's very important that you look at trying to teach both different ways to your kids probably you know the earlier the better uh, just to help them because throughout their careers they will come across different teams and how they are trying to play out of the back if they try and play out of the back. So, um, I actually stole this one from Vince and as I mentioned there earlier, uh, defending is fun for me and because I did do defending throughout my whole entire career and there was nothing better than going to play on fields like that on a wet soggy Sunday afternoon in uh, in northern England and uh, and just making a good old slide tackle and then having to give your white shirts back to your mum to clean after the game so but uh, when I work with a lot of players younger players over here when I say younger even our ODP players like 14 15 year olds who haven't necessarily touched even on a lot of defending yet you, tell, you mentioned when you go out to practice, you say, oh, we're going to work on some defending today. Most of the time you go, oh, defending. Now, for me, uh, like I mentioned, it is fun, but you've got to get every player to buy in. I've always come across with the, uh, the, the, the kind of the message is that if you can defend well, the least you're going to get uh, is at least a 0-0 tie in heaven. But forbid that a 0-0 tie would be a good game, but they can be. So the best, or uh, so that might be the worst, the best you can maybe get is a one nothing win. So, so it is about attitude. 
and uh, if, you, if you write the word attitude down and you give each letter the number that it represents there in the alphabet, so A is the first letter, T is the 20th, uh, I is the 9th and so on and so on, it actually gives you 100, 100%. So when we're working on defending, for me the attitude has got to be right of the players, it's got to be right of you as the coaches, and you want everybody to buy in 100% into what you're going to do, whether that's defending late or whether that is defending early. So, um, when, we, uh, when you're teaching the players um, throughout, the, throughout the season, you've got to help your players read the moments and see the, thing, the, see the game that's going on and how it's being played. Um, it's uh, one of the good things. Thing, so. so it is about attitude. Okay. One, of the, uh, one of the big things that we, uh, we talk about is uh, when we're teaching the coaching courses to, uh, to other candidates, is about seeing keys and seeing the moments so they can be able to teach the players on how to see these keys and moments and the situations of when to press or when to drop depending on your philosophy. Uh, so you help them during the practice moments to see that so then when it comes to a game day you can sit down in your fold away chairs and enjoy the game. So that uh, actually when I first came to the country the fold away chairs was my furniture in my apartment so <laughs> thankfully, thankfully I've moved on a little bit now since then. So. <laughs> But uh, some of the keys and cues might be that if you're defending, uh, if you're trying to defend from the front, is that uh, you might be trying to see that uh, a square ball gets played. Can you intercept it quickly? It might be that one ball gets played from a left back to a right back. Can you intercept that quickly? Now, I apply the pressure. A lot of the times we don't see very many left-footed left backs playing in the youth game. It's often a right-footed player playing at left back because we haven't worked on our youth players being comfortable with using both feet. So it might be that we can jump on that player, what we call pressure pockets, and uh, force that player to make the mistake to win that ball back early. Some of the cues might be that the team does like to play long. So we might allow them to play long because we might have ourselves some big tall centre-backs, a.k.a. Stoke City, and they mm. know. So we might be able to drop back and allow them to uh, allow us to win those balls in the air. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend any Stoke City fans that might be uh, that might be listening to this or watching this presentation <laughs> in the future. But you, as a coach, you've got to make sure as well that you know you own, know the principles of play. You know the pressure, the cover, uh, the balance, are some of the things that you are looking for on the defensive principles. And then when you can see those, those are the pictures uh, that you have to paint for those players during your practice sessions. Of course these principles may differ uh, between the styles. Right? So if you are deciding to defend early, you may uh, put immediate pressure on. If you're defending later, your pressure might come back after the service has been played in to the strikers or, uh, or into a target player and then you play the pressure into there because you're more comfortable defending in your own attacking half or defensive half, sorry, sorry home defensive half or third uh, and then you can defend from there. So, you know, there is slightly difference on where and when and how the pressure is applied. It's just one of the principles that may differ just between the styles. So, so defending later. Um, this is uh, a picture here that we stole from, uh, or that I that uh, of Arsenal versus Schalke from the from a uh, Champions League game this year, and as you can see that uh, Arsenal's uh, back whole back four and old mid whole uh, midfield uh, four is basically dropped back, defending on top of their uh, own 18 yard box. So. Is it an opposition strength that you basically, Germans, have, as they've proven a little bit this last couple of weeks, is, do still play a, a, a direct kind of game. It's a direct, but it's very quick, and it is proving to be very, uh, uh, perhaps changing the style of, of uh, how things have been looked at over the last uh, two weeks. But uh, perhaps that is about dropping back and allowing them that space to be able to play out. Then Arsenal, as they, one of their strengths personally is, and if, if you watch Arsenal play, they are very fluent in the attack. They are very quick when they have players like Walcott and 
and uh, and play, and people like that playing for them. One of their strengths is speed. Can they suck the defenders in or the opposition in by bringing them in, defending them in, so they can exploit space for them to then to a counter attack in? So it's, uh, it's what's something that you'll probably see teams like Arsenal that will try to do that. So you may defend later if you do have quick forwards and you do like to counter attack against your opponent. Again, that might be the strengths of your own players that you defend later because you do have quick forwards and you can counter attack quickly. It does even change in the game. All right, so you might defend later, def later in the game uh, or drop back deeper depending on the score. And if you are, you know, winning. 3 nothing. you might not have to go and chase the game. You may just defend back a little bit uh, and just allow, uh, once you win it, just to maintain and keep possession. Depends on weather. If you're defending early, defending early can rely on you, your team and your players to use up a lot of energy. If it's a hot day, you might not want to be having them charging around like what we say, bull in a china shop, just chasing everything down and not getting everything. So they may... Uh, pick and choose the moments on uh, dropping back and allowing them to come in and defending from there. You know, tournaments, very interesting, um, and I don't want to even get on my soapbox about that. And I'm, I know Vince and I share the same opinions on that, but uh, unfortunately, tournaments comes to results. Um, and when you're then and, and tournaments and state cup events and you're trying to work out standings and things like that, perhaps how you play may change as well and if we talk about the Champions League here um, a lot of the times you would see when teams are playing on the two-legged ties and they go and play away from home they what you'd hear the commentator say well well they're packing it in or if you heard people like Jose Mourinho say well they're parking the bus um, but it's uh, just basically about defending later and dropping back and just making sure that you don't get scored upon knowing full well what when you go home You've got uh, got that advantage. So, hey Adrian, what 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 age groups? Like, if you're a coach listening to this, what age groups might you consider this tactic? Sure, uh, that's that's a good that's a good question, Vince. I mean, we we actually worked on it a little bit, considering um, we did something with our U U eleven U twelve group the other night about uh, introducing defending later because they did have they have some very quick forwards. And mm. it was about how they could then counterattack, and uh, the reason was that we looked at trying to introduce that to them is because it was about uh, the opposition that they was playing against as well, and the game that they was coming up against. Um, so I, I have seen it gone down to the eleven and twelve year olds, and I, like I mentioned earlier, Vince, for me defending defending is fun, and right. and and one of the things I'll get into on here is when you talk about putting this tactic in and even though we say hey we're working on defending the key aspect of this if I'm defending later is the actual counter-attack because that's what the players want to do hey can we win it can we break out of it quickly so you know so for me introducing it would probably be 11 and 12 year olds but there has to be the outlet for those players for them to be able to realize that hey when we win it bang we're in the best opportunity we can get so it, you know, defending later is can be an also a bit of a, uh, a dangerous game and something that probably can be difficult to do because at that age is it's relying on a lot of discipline. Well, both both styles actually rely on a lot of discipline, but this one's as you still know the, when they're 11 and 12. Hey, let's go and get after the ball. We've got a lot of energy, so mm -hmm. it's trying to educate them on on just letting the other team make the mistake. And then you can basically pick up on that mistake as well. So it's difficult at that age, Vince. I have done it, um, but it, the, the hardest part is getting them to work, really work with the first defender, understanding not to go and chase the ball. And if he doesn't or she doesn't chase the ball, most of the time, you know, they can they can stay a little bit more disciplined about it. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. No. Thank you. All right, so we talked about defending early, and, and uh, we, you know I mentioned Barcelona, uh, who uh, have had a bad two weeks, but uh, 
haven't had the uh, wasn't at their full strength for neither of the games. However, that, that shouldn't uh, take away and credit from what Bayern Munich has done. So, and I talked about we, everyone seems to talk about Barcelona, and, and I think the great thing is that the way that the United States Soccer Federation and their uh, and their coaching material that they put out, uh, which was written a couple of years ago, and the way that uh, Jurgen's even trying to get the uh, the national team men's national team playing is trying to defend from the front and win the ball back early. Um, you know, when you think about styles of play and you think about the US and people say, well, we don't really have a style. And I've kind of disagreed with that for, for some time because I think we have had a style. We are hard working. We will put play, players under pressure. We won't give opposition time on the ball, which is when you think you went back to the CONCACAF, which was... Um, Two thousand back when he was in South Africa, and I'm even forgetting my years now. But uh, whenever that was, you know how we caused problems with Spain, and we, we we caused problems with Brazil because of our hard work and our hard and our commitment. So, mm -hmm. you know, Jurgen is still trying to implement that, trying to win the ball back early is 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 a good time for us to go. So, is it an opposition weakness as I mentioned earlier, or is it your team strengths? Um, if you look at Barcelona's and what their kind of philosophy is though on here and you can see these pictures where I've got the four players circled and I think that's uh, Iniesta that's um, forced the center back to play the ball into the middle there uh, into Busquets um, and that is Barcelona's philosophy is that you know can they force and keep things very compact from the front to be picked off by a defensive midfielder or, or whether it's a Xavi or that can pick the ball up and then start pulling the strings again um, so that's that's something that they have that I have tried to uh, tried to implement for several years and very successful but however if they don't win that ball back early and if they can't do it and the, the opposition doesn't panic and still tries to play out of the back and then Barcelona if they can't win the ball back within like you know the five or six passes they don't necessarily go running around and try, with like chickens with their heads cut off trying to win the ball but they will eventually drop back so there is still a little bit of a mixture of Barcelona's style is okay yeah our main philosophy is to try and win it back early if we can't win it back early though we still have to be disciplined and drop back because if we go chasing after it we're just going to leave gaps open anyway so um, so I mean that's it's not just about working hard because it does require your teammates and your forwards to work hard. And if you play like eight versus eight, or you know, eleven versus eleven, whatever you play, you turn around. And if you play eleven versus eleven in a four-four-two formation or four-four-four-three-three, a lot of the times you'll say to the kids, "Hey, how many defenders have you got? Oh, we've only got four. Well, no, we, we've got to we've got to get everyone to work defensively. You know, defending from the front." Um, but working hard, but working smart. Uh, defenders don't like to necessarily, uh, sorry, forwards don't necessarily like to defend, you know, but some of the best forwards are still great defenders, including Mr. Messi himself, who does not get credit for his defensive duties. So it can disrupt other teams from playing, but only if you work the right way. So. So some little activities that uh, I've put out for defending later. And uh, down the uh, the right hand side at the bottom, you'll see the five W's: what, who, where, when, and why, um, which is what we'll come come through with a little, uh, on a little bit there. Because when you're coaching uh, defending activities, you go to think about the principles of play and think about the the breakdowns. Well, what happened? Who was involved? Where in the field did it happen, or, or where, or whereabouts on the field did it happen? When did it happen, and why did it happen? You know, so uh, and those are some of the things that you've got to look at when you're coaching, is so you can see those things. So remember those five W's on the, on those principles and look at them. So it might be, well, who was involved? Well, the first defender didn't apply enough pressure, or sorry, didn't drop back off and went chasing which left gaps in between us because we're talking about defending later here when the ball wasn't to be won. All right? So th those are some of the things that you've got, you've got to realize. So a little activity here is just a, the first one's the two versus one to small goals. Uh, 
you know, because if you're in two, two, two attackers coming at one defender, you, you've basically just got to hold the play and delay the play until you can uh, you can get into that. Um, Vince has talked. I think I think he's done a webinar on the anchoring activities. Um, mm -hmm. which, which yeah, I know he does. Which for me, you can then build onto this. You can just add another defender in. Uh, so if we're working on the blue play, blue team, and uh, attacking the uh, the Reds are attacking that goal and the attacking the one defender. You can start with uh, one defender coming from behind the red team's goal, all right? And then you can make that a two versus two game activity. So, uh, so when the ball gets into play, that blue player can join in. But two versus one is about just breaking it down to its probably its smallest principle on how do you delay it and where do you delay it, uh, why you delay it because you're in the in the uh, in the two versus one situation. You've got numbers up against you. So. Another little activity is a uh, is a three versus three to targets, uh, and it's just basically that uh, that as you can see the blues are trying to play it into their target in an end zone, and uh, you can play it in and you can get a point. So once the blues, if they play it into the target, the blue player just gives it back to the red team, and the red team are playing into to their end zone. And you're looking on here now. Your principles is about you know denying the penetration. Um, but you're putting the target player behind them and they don't want to get the ball behind them um, so it's just basically making sure that they're aware fully aware the whole entire time of what's behind them so nothing can get in there to the target player so you know, staying compact which is obviously one of your principles and uh, just uh, a progression from that would be that if the blue plays it and reaches it into his target player the target player has to play it back to a blue player who then has to dribble into the end zone. Nothing new, I'm sure many of you have seen those before, these activities before. Um, and you don't have to if you've got some activities that might work for you, they, they work for you and that's great. And you know, if you want to share those ideas and activities with me, that would be great as well. I'd be happy to, to see those and you can email those to me or, or ask me any questions about any more questions about these activities at the end, um, you know, or, or you can contact me. Sorry, but uh, but I mean, it's uh, on this one here that will again be another anchoring activity on how you can progress just using the same activity without having to change your whole grid. So another one on here is I'm a big kind of fan of the, the phases of play. Um, phases of play is uh, is a big goal to two counter goals. So uh, the blue team is just uh, defending the big goal. You'll see here I've got the the numbers set up on them uh, on my blue a two, which is my right back, a four and five, which is the two centre backs, depending on which country you come from. Six could be a centre back, and three is your left back, or or six in this situation is the defensive midfielder. It is a it's an old school. Uh, numbering system I guess which uh, I grew up with and, and I think we're trying, well we are, I don't think, I know we're trying to bring it into the US so if, if the coach says hey you're my number two, most people know hey you're my right back, if you're my number one you're, you're the goalkeeper. In the good old days back in uh, back in my homeland we only went from shirts one through eleven, we never had anything, uh, no numbers like 56 or anything like that, That's uh, we kept that to the line backers in this country uh, but uh, so but you know you went into the dressing room into the locking room and you just hoped that you was going to get that shirt either 2 through 11 or 1 if he was the goalkeeper I never wanted the number 1 shirt anyway I, as, I, as you, I mentioned earlier I always was hoping I'd get that number 2 shirt so but you knew what position you was going to be playing in so you had that functional role and how does that functional role then build into how you worked as a in a in a unit, like what phases of play is basically doing is working on units and working on lines and the relationship between the lines. So here, when you're trying to defend later, it's how what is the relationship between the back four uh, with the goalkeeper and the back four uh, and that uh, defensive midfielder, and that's probably what a phase, you know working on those lines and how they work together to understand of recognizing our. How and when they've got to drop back. So, 
Um, if they win the ball, again, all I can do is then just dribble into the uh, into the two counter goals, which are just slightly over the halfway line. So, um, again, so if you have any questions for me, please feel free to email them to me or anything that you that you want to uh, some more information on. My information is here at the end, so I'll be happy to uh, to uh, chat further with you. So. Uh, defending early in the third, and actually, I even do this one uh, as young with, with my with my U nines, my uh, eight year old, seven and eight year old kids. The games in the third, so they love this activity. You know, it's just a little game, you know, so I play them as the third activity here. We're going to start with the third game. If they win the ball in the defensive third, they go on and, and go on and score. It's worth three points. If they win the ball in the attacking third and go on and score, it's worth two points. If they win the ball in their own Defensive half, uh, defensive third, and go on and score. It's just one point regular goal. So um, it's uh, it, it's fun. They enjoy it, but the key moment is about teaching them the right keys and cues of when to go. You know, if the fullback receives the ball with his own back to the goal, can we then go and pressure up high? Uh, can we win the ball? Can we win it and score the three points? However, you'll notice a lot of the times when we talk about who goes, yeah, we talk about the striker goes, but if we're trying to win it back up early, we'll see a lot of the times with young kids, they'll say, okay, striker goes, uh, you can go on your own, thank you very much, we'll see you go. <laughs> All right, and I, I talked about him earlier, but Klinsman as a player was actually a fantastic defender and defending from the front. And when Klinsman went, the whole German team went as well. So... It's uh, it's not just about hey you go on your own and we'll come after you and two minutes later when we catch our breath. No, everyone's got to go and stay compact and working together as a unit. So, um, so the other one that helps you kind of come into that is a four versus four plus four game. And the defending team in this game here is the yellow team. The blues and the reds are trying to keep possession. All right, so it's really what you demand from your players that are defending in here is high pressuring at the right time, recognizing when uh, the mistakes are made. Is it a bad first touch? If it's a bad first touch, that's why I go. Are they stuck in the corner? So it would be where? They're in the corner. That's why we go. Who goes? Is it the nervous player? Uh, and how do the defenders fall in around him or her? So, so if the yellows win it, they become the attacking team and they join the reds and then the blues would be in the middle. So it's just a four versus four plus four game. You can do that three versus three plus three, plus three, two versus two plus two, depending on what age group you've got. You know, but it's when they're working in the middle, and this is a good thing about defending. For me as a coach, you've got to get excited, enjoy your coaching activities, and the more enthusiasm you put into it, a coach, I don't believe, I know, the more enthusiasm you're going to get out of your players. So... Um, and then another little one that we do again here, the lad do defending early. And of course we try to avoid lines and, and uh, as, as much as we can. So this is just a very quick firing activity. It's probably in like a uh, 10 by 10 grid. Uh, red player plays it out to a target player who's out of the side. One player from the defensive team comes out and you just play them one versus one. So... The, uh, the red team player, if he can get it, tries and dribbles, or she can get it, tries and dribbles through the goal. The yellow player gets it, and he can or she can dribble through the opposing goal. No one can defend the goals. Key moments here, though, is the defender. You want the defender when to start applying pressure, when the ball is being played. Why? Well, is it a slow pass? Okay. Can you force the receiving player to keep their back to the ball? If it's a quick pass, all right? Maybe I apply pressure, but my body position and my body shape has got to be different. All right? So, again, those are the W's, some of the W's and the situations that you have to look at as coaches. Young kids, like I mentioned earlier, like to go and get the ball. That ball gets played in. They're straight onto it as quickly as they can. I put the word as well competition in there because you can make this a competition as individuals. You can make this a competition uh, as teams because I earlier put that defending is fun if you can put competition in there and keep scores and keep just that all right who scores more goals yellows 
hopefully, because they're working on the defensive side of things. That's great. So uh, another another way you can uh, encourage that to make it more competitive defensively is if the red start with the attacking team and the yellows win it, they go on and score, it's worth two points. So just some encouragement things that you can put in there just to make it more fun and give them the incentives to actually want to defend for you. So. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I learned from Vince and learned from many other of my mentors that uh, that we that I've had the opportunity to work with it here in in the uh, in the U.S. So, but not only should we learn from the game itself, but you know, for me, you can learn from other games, other sports. So, um, so I, I actually saw this quote today as I was setting up this presentation for Vince and. Uh, so, because trying to actually, to be honest, we are trying to find a a quote, or should I say, a smart soccer quote by a smart soccer player is very difficult. So, <laughs> <laughs> they're not necessarily the smartest. Oh, they exist. They're, yeah, they're not necessarily the smartest players or the smartest people out there. So, um, but you you could have the greatest bunch of individual stars in the world, but if they don't play together, the team won't be worth a dime. And for me. Playing together is not just about how, how you play when you have the ball, but it's also about how you play when you don't have the ball. And Spain, I'll use them as now, got a lot of credit, you know, for their attacking play and how they've played and how, you know, in the last national or in the last uh, major national championship, they only conceded one goal. Uh, or, or how they won it, but they only, they only did them, only conceded one goal, and that's something that they should be given credit for as well. So, you know, my recommendation is out here for you guys that are working as coaches, don't necessarily just neglect on your defensive side, because for me, if you can get a team that defends well, you've got a team that's going to be very, very difficult to break down and very, very difficult to beat because they are disciplined uh, and they will work together and they'll stick together. And that is something that no matter how much money you have, you're just not going to be able to buy that kind of stuff. So, um, so again, thank you to uh, to Vince uh, for this opportunity. Um, that there was my uh, contact details, my my email address, and, uh, and that's my work number. That please feel free to give me a, a call anytime or email me or if you want to I, I do get a lot of questions sent to me via Twitter on different things and I do put up uh, several activities uh, on, on things through there as well so uh, please feel free to uh, to contact me at uh, at any time so thank you well, ben. you're welcome Adrian thank you and uh, I don't know if you can uh, undo your screen share again and there you go. There we Thank go. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, it's again wonderful seeing you. And I'll see you this weekend. Yep, yep. But uh, so um, good weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, Adrian, if you could be so kind as to maybe share that PowerPoint, and then what I can do is I can send it out to our viewers. Sure. Um, and all those people that subscribe to our website, soccermentors.com, and, and uh, we're going to share Robin Russell's as well. Um, so, Adrian, thank you very much for taking the time. And English than me, Robin does. What's that? that? Robin speaks a bit better English than I do. You, know? uh, you do all right. You slow down. You, uh, you slow down a little bit. But uh, it might be just, you know, because it's what's well, it's, what? Is it 9.30 there? Yeah, yeah we're, still, we're on uh, Eastern time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. All right. But... Uh, Anyway, no, uh, thank you again. And again, on behalf of SoccerMentors.com and my colleagues, Johnny Barraza, Danny Capsalis, Ken Harkenreiter, thank you very much. And uh, have a good night. And I'm going to end this broadcast. And uh, Adrian, if you can stay on, that'd be great. But okay. for all our viewers, thank you very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you next week for our last one.